dot get uh, c xp reward now <coughs> once that's done we need to uh, add those to the uh, player class variables and so we go m player dot uh, set zarn uh, rx add actually that should be a string M player dot set rubies rr add M player dot get diamonds rdi add M player dot get draconic R D add or set rubies, not get rubies. Duh. Really? Oh, really? I said just diamonds. Let's go fix that then. Player class player.h set dia. Probably have to change the uh, function down here as well. Yeah. All right. And there you have it. Four four two two four six seven. Comes out to five two twenty five lines. So he shrunk down six hundred and sixty seven lines into twenty five. That is a hell of a thing.
I don't get it. Let's just say redeclared. Oh, T in it. What's going on with that? So we won't need that actually at all because it's going to be H in it now is what that's going to be. So. Oh, I see. It's because we need to have another... I thought, I thought there was supposed to be another one there. Duh. So... Player... And then player. So we did need that there. Cancel. That was with that. Player. Uh, H-team. Did I delete the wrong one? Yeah, here, this is the one we want to get rid of. Or the one we want to use, we want to, want to use that one for H in it. HT setup just sets up the number of enemies. Um, T in it, though, is the one we want to use. Battle proc? What the hell? H in it, player and M player. Okay. Get player reward. Rewards if not escaped. If you escape from a battle before actually completing it, or just destroying all the enemies, you don't get any rewards at all. Um, because you're not able to scavenge, uh, through, you know, the scrap, go through the scrap, uh, of your enemy ships. That you have destroyed. So, um, add rewards to player. Only if not escaped. You also don't get any experience for not for escaping. Well, really, that shouldn't. I don't know. Let's see. Let's take that one out of here. Well, hmm. Damn. I don't want to make another. I have to make another for loop. So maybe this is what we'll do. We'll say that there will be some that will be only if you have escaped. I have not escaped. Uh, that one won't be one of them though. So you'll still get your experience. And we'll need to do one more though, then also. Um, so if not escaped, first of all, well... If... 
hostile. I don't know, H team I dot is or dot ship dot each ship. So only for each destroyed ship and only if you've escaped. This way what we're doing is saying um, so if you have escaped that you're not getting experience for ships you haven't destroyed. So it goes through the team the H team hostile team array and looks for hostiles in the team in that team that have been destroyed where their ships are destroyed. And if they have been destroyed then um, if you have escaped you won't get any of this but you'll still get the EXP for the ships you've destroyed. But if you have destroyed, haven't escaped, um, then you'll get everything for each ship that you destroyed. Even though, if you haven't escaped, you would still have all the ships destroyed, so it wouldn't matter. But we have to have this here for if you have escaped. If we didn't do it this way, we'd have to have two separate ones of these, and that would just start getting to look like this one over here with all that crap everywhere, where we had just everything listed there like that. So this is better because it covers more uh, ground, if you will. If at any point in time you can create something that can uh, be used to work, you know, it can be used for more than one situation, um, just by adding in, like what I did here, some if statements, you should do it. You shouldn't make two different uh, you know, sections. So in other words, you shouldn't do what I had before. You should make two of those, one for escaped and one for not escaped. You should make... One assuming that um, one that is one like this that I have here, where it uh, takes into account and both of the uh, outcomes. In other words, if you've escaped and if you've not escaped, and what would be given then and what wouldn't be given based on that, and also whether the ships have been destroyed or not. And that's how you should be doing it, uh, just to kind of you know keep the code to a minimum, but also make it um, comprehensive. So, uh, we need to do the same thing down here with this one. So, we need to add this down there. So that's to there. So I guess it is to there then. Huh. Oh, these are over too far. That's what it is. I was wondering what the hell was going on. Didn't look like the tabulation was correct. That's why, because they're over too far. There we go, that's better. Okay, so... That's essentially the end battle... Uh, function all done out there. Um, we may add some more stuff into this as time goes on. Oops. I'll see him on that one. So, uh, what's next? Let's go up here since we're having to redo this whole entire thing. Um, HT init. So it's just H init now. Without this. Hostiles M player. Uh, H in it. And to add int hostiles. Whoops. Alright. And the reason we need to do that is because this will uh, tell us how many 
enemy uh, ships are supposed to be putting into our enemy team array. Hostile team array. And we'll probably do the same thing for the player as well when I implement wingman. So... Well, you know what? We should do it this way now, because if we don't do it now this way, then we have to change um, how it works later on, and that would mean the losses. Let's, let's go on the other side of caution and actually do it the way it's supposed to be done first. Then we can just add stuff in as we go. So, um, what we'll do is we'll load the player into a player, uh, into the player team is what we'll do. And then just use that. So player targets, um, and that'll happen in the, uh, I think the in the uh, hostile in this in this thing here, which I actually call this battle initialization, I think, instead of hostile, because it'll be setting up both cla uh, both player and uh, hostiles now. Battle initia uh, initialization. Um, where are you? Down here. Called battle. And hostile. Int. Hostiles. Alright, so, um... And then we'll say, um... P team is now what's called P team. Yeah, player P team. And then, uh, P team. Zero equals player. And P team zero equals M player. We have to do, um, We have to do it this way first because we need to initialize the uh, array element first. Actually, we'll say for i equals zero, i is less than or equal to um, Players. Well, we'll put uh, two for now. I plus plus. I. Just so that uh, it'll initialize each element to a player class. Uh, but we'll only uh, set the M player to the first one. <sighs> so, I may need to fix these to be uh, working with 
uh, CB, the uh, Comet Experience levels, instead of with the uh, ranks. Essentially, it's the same thing. The ranks are given at a certain Comet Experience level, but the Experience levels, I think, are a more accurate way of doing uh, this kind of stuff. And we'll leave it like this for now. Unless I need to do otherwise. Um, so, we're just going to be doing everything now, assuming that there's teams. But there only there can be one ship teams. So, while battle is not ended, MP dots uh, PB status M player or we'll say um, P team zero Hopefully that'll work. Um, let's see. Let's make another variable here. Call it um, hostiles and int um, allies. For right now, and then that'll also be set from within uh, the other one down here, wherever it was we're setting up the hostiles value. We'll change this to battle team setup instead of hostile again. So we set up both teams at once. Um, battle team setup. And down here we'll set uh, allies. And what we'll do now is, is on this one that we call the uh, menus for, we're going to send through those values. So, PB status, um, M player. And say allies. Or we'll send through the we'll send through the player team, P team. And we'll change that to a uh, hostiles uh, or uh, an array argument with that. And we'll also take out the uh, singular one that we don't need anymore. Um. Let's see, message proc. So, uh, it's down, down, down here. Change this to P team args <coughs> and then allies.
player um, args int allies int hostiles Okay, now here this one, yeah. And I guess we'll also send their string um, p target. Or string target, I guess. Alright, go back over here. Um, player args string target. Now, since we need to set it up the same way as we did the uh, hostile one down here. Get rid of that one entirely. So, um, since we need to set up the same way, so um, let's see. So let's talk about target. So I think it's what it's saying is that the okay p target I see so it's it's showing the one that you're targeted onto we're going to change that we're not going to use target anymore it's just going to be a a listing of them so uh, we'll take out the target from here actually so we won't need it. Uh, we want message proc. No more string targets. We'll just use for loops to cycle through the, uh... Cycle through the uh, arrays. Okay, so then we just need to put up the uh, same thing here. For int equals zero, i is less than allies, i plus plus, less than or equal to actually. Oh no, wait. Um, yeah, less than. Not less than or equal to. Just making sure I didn't have that set up wrong there. So it should be less than. Less than only. If it's less than or equal to, then you're going to end up with a uh, access violation error because you've overrun the uh, array elements. It has to be less than allies. Because allies goes to three, but the array will go zero to two. Um, now we need to do this with everything. Okay, now where it says M player and everything, we need to change that to uh, something else. So we go quick replace M player dot, or not M player, well yeah, M player. M player we replace that with crap. We replace it with uh, P team I.
Oh, it's args. I guess, oh, okay. It says args. So we want to switch this to P team instead of args. Gotcha. All right, then I'm going to take out args out of here and replace it with H team. Args, yes, we are pirates. H team. Crap. Place all. All right. String target. Change these from args to what they're supposed to be. Alright. Hostiles minus one, so we just do this. Instead of having to do all that. Those are fixed now. Let's go back over to battle processing. It's P team allies MP dots H battle status H team hostiles. Style team status. Okay, now here's the thing. How are we going to do this part? Now, this one's going to be a little more complicated because. We have to determine the order in which the ships attack. And it has to be determined by... <clears throat> whoever has the higher initiative. The problem with this is that... There could be... For instance, let's say we're cycling through... Um, on a nested loop. Where we have... We take one out of the player team and go against each one of the hostile teams. Well, let's say that um, the first player, you the player, uh, has a higher initiative than the first two, but not the last hostile. However, in the player team, the last uh, player team entity has a higher initiative than all of them on the hostile team. You wouldn't be able to do that. That last player wouldn't be able to go first because you would be cycling through and you would hit the last hostile which is higher than your initiative and he would attack which isn't how it should work so we gotta figure out a way to determine who has the highest initiative and 
then have them attack and figure that whole thing out. So, um, I'm thinking of maybe doing it so we have a loop that goes through, and, uh, we check the initiative of each, uh, player and hostile entity against each other. But that still wouldn't work. We need to figure out who has the highest. Um, so we go through, I think what we'll do then is we'll have another, we'll have another array that will have an attack order for the attack order um, of how it'll work. And then we'll go from that, we'll do the battle from that array instead of from these two arrays. I think that's what, what we'll have to do. Um, but then we'll also have to update the arrays, other two arrays, so that the, I don't know. Um, how about we keep, well, you see, here's the thing, though, because we have the battle status. Now it uses those other two arrays, so. Um, we need something that will, one, do that, and then two, we'll keep, we'll keep track of which entity is where inside of that array. Um, so that we'll be able to update the player and hostile team arrays after each turn is undertaken. Um, that can be done through the player name, I think, and the hostile names. Maybe that's how we'll do it. We'll do it through the names. Because um, each one of them will have their own names. And essentially when you're talking about the, the player name is really the the captain's name of the ship. Um, I think that's just what we'll have to do. Yeah. Alright, so now we have to say um, determine uh, attack order. And this will have to be done each time, because if there's a ship that's disabled, they aren't going to be able to attack. And so, uh, actually, this is going to be a vector instead of a an array, because we'll be, have to be able to have it be dynamic. Because there may be six ships attacking or fighting each other, and then, say, one or more gets disabled, and that means we have to have four or less, or five or less, uh, that are participating in the battle. So, um, we'll need to go back to battle proc and create a vector. We'll actually put those over here now. So that's what I should have been in the first place. Make sure they still uh, work, though. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so what to do now is go over here and say um, battle uh, what do I call it, though? Um, battle Participants vector. Let's see. So, how do we do this? Maybe I'll have a battle participant struct or something. I don't know, let's see. Um, two classes.
common base type. So Shape sphere, new sphere. Interesting. Interesting. Well, if we have to do this, then we have to do this. So maybe we can. I took my hard drive space real quick. So I got plenty of space. So <clears throat> this might be a good time to do that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create a class called Entity that will store that will have all the uh, functions required for the graphical version, like being able to draw. Uh, sprites or models or whatnot, but for now we'll just use it to create our thing here. So um, let's add that in. Add new item h file entity k okay, add source files new item cpp file entity. I won't store anything in it right now. It'll just be an empty. Uh, Kind of sort of empty reference or whatever, but um, if and if entity h define entity h uh, class entity public. Entity private All right, include whoops. And include entity dot h um, entity entity. It's an empty constructor to make uh, 
use of that. Okay. So now open up player. Whoops. You got the player and hostile that I should add an entity to here. Include. Hostile extends, I believe, right? Or no, not extends, just uh, public, yeah. Now, let's see, let's go back over to here. Um, so, shape, SD vector, shape, pointer. Why use pointers? Does it have to be pointers? Void pointers. All right, so go to Battle Proc the add entity. So, uh, we also need to add vector. Okay, so vector um, entity. I'm going to say battle participants. Okay, so back to battle processing. Actually, let's add a uh, new function here: void um, battle add participants. I think that's spelled wrong. Participants, pence, participants, participants. No, that's right. The pants threw me off there, but uh, all right. Uh, let's see. In it and fill. B parts vector. <clears throat> so down here. Need to add uh, void battle proc. Strange. Um, B add participants. So now we have to say for um
what we're going to be doing now is just loading the vector. We're not going to be sorting it. We'll have to also sort it with a uh, kind of a bubble sort uh, system. So for i equals zero, i is less than um, allies i plus plus. So we say. Okay, first we need to um, determine the eligible number of participants, which is going to mean um, so B participants. Equal uh, plus equals one, and we'll I'll tell you what we're gonna do with that in a second. I need to create the uh, thing up here for it first. Int b participants number of eligible ships. Ah, eligible. That's not how you spell it. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. I think maybe double L. L-I-G-I-B-L-E. L-I-G-I-B-L-E. I think now that's right. Yep, eligible. No. Okay, uh, so we got that there. Now we're going to say if uh, P team dot or I dot P ship dot um, is disabled or is not disabled rather. At the beginning, which is me to make sure that we set that to zero. B participants equals zero. Okay, and then again, we'll just copy this and change a few things. Hostiles, uh, H ship, and H. Our H team and H ship. All right, so now we have our participants here. So now for I equals zero. I is less than or equal to B participants. Uh, so it's going to be minus 1, because it's going to be 0 and 1, not 0, 1, 2. So minus 1, i plus plus. Now what we're going to do here is initialize the uh, vector. So we're going to say battle participants. Okay, we need to make, let's sort these out, player participants, um, into two di into two separate uh, things here. So we have a large number of uh, player ships, and then int b h participants, which is the number of eligible hostile ships.
And we're going to use those to create this. So, B participants. And I'll make another one called int BT participants. No, uh, rewards if you guess what it's going to stand for. Yep, number of total participants. And that's what we're going to use for this one down here. BT participants. Uh, and BT participants is going to be uh, a combination of BP and BH participants. get total number of participating ships. All right, so um, We're also going to subtract these. And this is why. Here's what's going to happen now. We're going to say uh, if B P participants Well here's a problem though. The problem is is that even if we identify them we still have to figure out which ships are disabled or not. So um let's just screw this. Forget this. We'll just make this a lot simpler. And just say only the ships that, uh, so let's go kill these off. Screw it. Don't need those anymore. Um, back over here. Alright, we do need the total number of participants. Well, no, we don't. Well, no, let's bring these back. Except this is what we're going to do with this now. It's not going to be who's there and who's not there. It's going to be um, So here's what's we're gonna happen with this. We're gonna say uh, B T participants equals hostiles plus allies. B P participants equals allies. And 